everybody. I'm David Asman. Thank you so much for joining us. Kicking off tonight, unlike the lunatics running the government, most middle class Americans are playing it pretty smart right now. They're not spending money they don't have, for one thing. Today's Wall Street Journal says since the recession began, Americans have made deeper spending cuts in their own personal spending than ever before. Folks aren't going to restaurants, they're going there less, they're, they're taking fewer trips, they're buying less booze, they're cutting back on just about everything except food. And that's because food prices are going up, despite all that propaganda from the government that there's no inflation. Oh, yes, there is. Anybody who goes out shopping for food knows that there is inflation. And the folks who suffer most from inflation are the poorest folks who don't have much wiggle room when it comes to spending. The poor are spending about 5% more of their income than they did two years ago, unlike every other group of Americans, mostly because of rising food prices. And in the midst of all these personal cutbacks, all these sacrifices from folks who can't afford it, our free-spending Treasury Secretary is telling us the government isn't spending enough. Timothy Geithner said today that worries about too much government spending were, and I quote, greatly exaggerated, end quote. In fact, he says, quote, we need to continue providing well-targeted support for the recovery in the near term. Well, at the same time, over at the Federal Reserve Board, helicopter Ben Bernanke is apparently ready to enable more of this foolish spending by buying more government debt. The Fed looks ready to buy another one trillion dollars worth of government debt according to some estimates ostensibly to bring interest rates down just a touch more now that has caused a mini boom it's true in the stock market because wall street loves cheap or free money which it uses to gamble on things like gold that has send gold prices up and derivatives but it scares the bejesus out of the rest of us who still have to go out and buy groceries with dollars that don't buy as much as they once did the bottom line here is that middle class Americans and small businesses are not going to start investing or spending again just on the basis of another quarter percent interest rate drop. They'll spend more when they feel more comfortable about the future. And that's only going to happen when folks in government stop spending money and when the folks at the Federal Reserve stop printing money. And that better start happening pretty soon. Joining us now with more on all this from Coot, Texas, Republican Congressman and the man who knows all about the Fed, Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, great to see you. Before we talk about the Fed, I know that's that's the meat of the subject for you. But let's let's talk about Tim Geithner and his his talk about spending more. What do you think about that? It's insane. He, it's spoken like a true Keynesian. They've been taught that. They've been teaching that in our colleges for 40, 50 years. David, I'm impressed. You didn't get taken in by all that stuff. You must have gotten your education elsewhere. Well, I but did. I did. But hold on a second. I, I, I don't think it's fair to say that many other people got taken. I don't think a lot of people are taken in by this stuff anymore. Do you? Well, I think they're they're losing their support. I mean, we actually talk about Austrian economics and free markets and sound money and getting rid of the Fed and getting the Fed out of rigging uh, interest rates. Uh, two, three years ago, that wasn't happening. But it's I think it's the obvious failure of the system, not only in the United States, but worldwide. I think we're facing a crisis uh, equivalent to what happened with the Soviet system. It, it just collapsed. When money quits working, uh, the system won't work. They just can't keep spending and taxing and regulating and borrowing. It doesn't work, but they never quit. They never give up. So although you recognize and I recognize that more and more are catching on and they know what's happening, uh, people like Geithner and Bernanke and the rest of them, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to give up. Just think if Bernanke came out and agreed with us, he would have to admit, I don't know how long he's been an academician, but he'd have to say, oh, you know, I really messed up. My whole hypothesis about the cause of the depression, oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. he That's can't unlike do it. that well, psychologically. You're, look, you're, you're, you're exactly right, Congressman. They're never going to give up, but they may have to, they may be fired. I mean, we're going to have an election this, this term that could be as significant as any midterms we've ever had in this country, where a lot of folks who support these folks are going to be fired. Won't that drill the message home? Won't that clarify things? 
It's going to help, but it's not going to be the solution because, uh, you know, we will still have a lot of people in Congress that were there during uh, the Reagan years. I mean, I'm sorry, the Bush years, and they spent money, too. Sure uh, but I think maybe a lot of them have learned their lessons, and we will have some new people, but we won't have control of the executive branch, and we haven't reined in the Fed yet. But the most important thing is that people are waking up. This Tea Party movement and the change in the elections yep. that are going on, I think this is all very, very think positive. Worth it and as, you, as as tough as life is going to be when when all the spending catches up with it, all the spending, all the printing of money, as as difficult as that's going to be. Do you think in the long run the fact that we are all now clarifying things so clear in our own minds about about too much spending and and too much money printing? Is, does that make it worth it? Are we really going to shift in a in a fundamental way here in America in our economic policies? Well, you know, that's the big question. But I know one thing, if those of us who, uh, you know, at least believe we understand it and believe in a different system, if we do nothing, I mean, it's inevitable that, uh, you know, it's doom and gloom. You know, right. that's what we should expect. But, no, I'm more encouraged, and I think I go to a lot of college campuses. I'm encouraged that young people are looking at other types of economic theories, and they're looking at the free market and property rights, and they don't expect to be taken care of by the government. So that's where I'm encouraged. But it's not going to happen with one election. One election can build the momentum. Just like one summer, like last summer, uh, there was a momentum built by these uh, <clears throat> rallies and people confronting their congressmen. That was a big, big yeah. summer. And now there's a big election. That all is helpful. But what we replace what we have in Washington with is all the difference, makes all the difference oh, in the sure world. Oh, it sure does. It sure and does. I think, and, I, and, and, I think ideas... Uh, go ahead. Finish your thought. Ahead. I think ideas are the only thing that really counts. Uh, you know, the right. elections and all are important. Politicians, uh, they think they're real important. But ultimately is what the people endorse. The people have to support us. If we want to cut and not take care of people from cradle to grave and we're not the policemen of the world, the people have to understand that it's in their best interest. That's right. when the government will change. Look, we want to bring in a friend of yours, Judge Andrew Napolitano, just a second. But I want you solo for a second. There's the judge. I want you solo <laughs> on the issue of the Fed, on, on what the Fed is doing. because. The the suggestion that they haven't printed enough. You have Geithner saying we haven't spent enough, and then Bernanke over at the Fed saying we haven't printed enough money, and we're going to print it, essentially print about a trillion dollars more in order to lower interest rates. There's one calculation, by the way. Let's put that up if we can. Uh, an individual from Goldman Sachs who, who actually calculated how much spending one trillion dollars would equal. That would equal about a one quarter percent drop in interest rates. Now, we've seen interest rates come down two full percentage points in the past couple of years, and we haven't had more spending, we haven't had more investing, we haven't had more people buying homes because people are afraid of the future. So is a trillion dollars printing more money worth a quarter percentage drop? No, and what it's going to do is confirm the uh, con the concerns that people have. They're worried about the future, and if they see the Fed panicking again, mm. they already did two trillion. They're going to pump in another trillion, and you know they, th with the Congress and the Fed in these past two years, they injected 2.7 trillion dollars. They got a blip of a hundred billion dollars in GDP with 3.7 trillion injection, and when you count it for with inflation, there was no GDP increase. All That's that right. money and no increase. But it did bail out the rich. And what this does is I think it stimulates this hatred against people with money. And the big guys get bailed out. And everybody gets thrown in this thing. The productive individuals and the people who lived off the government are all in the same category now if they happen to have money. Right. And that has to be straightened out. Well, Crony it does capitalism stimulate the rich separated is, from capitalism. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, I mean, Wall Street loves free money because they go ahead and gamble with it. That's the reason the gold is up so much because they're borrowing money for free, buying things like like gold, which are sort of temporary investments that don't lead to any real growth in the economy, to make a quick buck. So Wall Street and Main Street have even more reasons to be against each other when you have all this distorted monetary policy. And you can in, you can include the uh, the banks as well. They get the money. Right. The reason that why the middle class gets wiped out is the people who get to spend the money first have you know a, a stronger currency. By the time it circulates, prices go up. And you already mentioned that inflation is coming back. Food prices, according to General Mills, will be up five percent this and year. And of course, they don't and, include uh, food prices in their in their inflation. But let me bring the judge in here if I can. And this is why, Judge, the folks who started this country back in the 1700s. 
felt so deeply about maintaining the value of the dollar. They felt so deeply about maintaining the value of the dollar that they wrote in the Constitution that if the government couldn't take life, liberty, or property without suing you for it. It couldn't do so by manipulating the currency supply. And they felt so strongly about the currency supply that in 1792 they enacted the Coinage Act, which said anybody in the government who does anything to devalue the coin of the realm they didn't use the word realm, of course, <laughs> shall suffer death. Yeah. It was the first death penalty death enacted penalty by the United States that? Congress. That's how that certain they were wow. that they wanted only the free market to regulate the value of the dollar. Okay. I wonder what the Federal Open Market Committee would feel today about the death penalty. Con Congressman, did you realize there was a death penalty attached to debasing the currency? Yeah, yeah, I'm very much aware of the uh, Coinage Act of 1792. By the way, was it ever uh, enacted? Did, did anybody actually pay for their oh, sure. life? Oh, oh, no. And I have to, you know, modify that a little bit. They use the word counterfeiting, but that's what the Fed is. They're counterfeiters. If you and I counterfeit, you know, we go to jail. Right. But we literally allow one individual to control the counterfeiting machine in central economic planning. They've been doing it, the, you know, the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And it is, it's a power I personally believe is greater than our president because he can give money to central banks around the world to other governments around the world he fixes interest rates he's a taxer because if with inflation that is a tax so he is well, very very powerful let me, let me it's ask, time it came to okay. an end let me ask we know where you both stand philosophically with regard to the fed but let me ask whether it's reasonable to assume that there will be any change we know that there will probably be change as a result of of this election in spending the way we spend money but First, starting with you, Judge, do you think anybody will really try to change the way we print money, the way yes. the Fed works? I think we'll see an incremental change, Dave. I think Congressman Paul's legislation to audit Fort Knox. Is there really any gold there? Shouldn't we know how much gold is there? To audit the Federal Reserve. That will open up a Pandora's box. When that legislation passes, and I predict it will, the president will veto it. It will eventually pass when a president who would be in favor of it would, uh, would sign it. Because there's a yearning on the part of the public to know what the heck the Fed has been doing. To when know what's in Fort Knox. Right, when the public finds out what's in Fort Knox and what the Fed I always has, assumed, has you ever seen the movie Goldfinger? I, I always assumed great. that you opened the doors and there was all this gold. Well, the government wants us to assume Congress that, but the government can't prove it. You think it. it's possible there may not be any gold there? Well, I think the gold will probably be there, but what we need the when we investigate this, we have to look at the swap arrangements because they they do swap it around and make loans and sell it. But if they <clears throat> took me into a room and showed me a bunch of bars of gold, you have to have an authentic audit, and it would include more than just counting bars. You want to find out who owns it. But uh, I think, uh, regardless, we are a very poor nation as far as uh, our true wealth goes because all we have is debt, and uh, we need to know. About the gold because well, it's all we have, soon, all, when you say we, you're, you're talking about the government. I think a lot of people feel that they have been straightening, spending the last three or four years straightening out their own accounts. As I mentioned at the beginning, Mer Americans are spending a lot less than they used to. They're 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 cleaning out their their debt accounts as best as they can. So America, the economy, if it's if it's a collection of individuals, peoples, excluding the government, is doing pretty well. My question, my final question, though, for both of you. Do you think it's reasonable to assume that things will get so bad that maybe we'll be forced to go back to a gold standard, which would essentially mean getting rid of the Fed, Judge? Hallelujah if we go back to a gold standard. Hallelujah if we get rid of the Fed. It would solve 90% of the problems that we face today. It would restrain the government. It would be a natural restraint on the, on the government. They couldn't print cash if they didn't have gold to back it up. Uh, what are we going to do with $13 trillion in debt? And it'll be $14 trillion in another year. How are we going to pay that? Just by not adding to our expenses. But, uh, Congressman, do you think that we could go to a gold standard? Oh, yeah, I, all countries, when they destroy their paper currency, will eventually have to quit the printing presses and, uh, and go to some uh, sound monetary system. So, uh, yes, I think it's coming, but uh, I think we're going to have a calamity, a real collapse mm. first. I, th I think all the incrementalism we can get, the better prepare the people, but uh, they're going to tinker. The politician, this is too painful to cut spending. And even with some new people there, it's still going to be too painful. So we will march know, on you, to you the know, destruction of the dollar and runaway I, inflation. I, I, I I agree with uh, your philosophy 100 percent on this on these matters, but I think that the people are ready for a sweeping change. I don't think it's going to be an incremental change. I think this is going to be a sweeping change in getting. But well, we, well, we, the sweeping, you know what a sweeping change is called? A revolution. Yeah. Okay, quickly, I, Congressman. 
I think the sweeping change will come, but it will come after the collapse. Okay. But I'm always working to try to prevent that. Gentlemen, you both have so much to talk about. You can continue the discussion more this weekend, by the way, because Congressman Ron Paul will be Judge Andrew Napolitano's guest on Freedom Watch. It starts at 10 a.m. on Saturday, Eastern Time. But if you miss that, it's repeated all kinds of places. 8 p.m. that night, Sunday, 7 and 11. So there's no excuse not to see it. Ron Paul, Andrew Napolitano. Gentlemen, thanks to both. Both of you. Coming up on deck, blue dogs or lap dogs, the tug of war over tax hikes and spending.